So my husband had uh, built this music maker Cheyenne Harp a couple months ago and if you are new to music makers, check out my interview with owner Jacob Nelson who talk about the company's amazing offerings of musical instrument including a really beautiful lineup of harp. This is the largest kit harp that they offer. It is a 36 string harp and as you can see it's quite a bit bigger than my dusty string crescendo so if you have seen me in other videos I'm sitting in the same chair next to the harp right now and it's quite a bit taller and it is a, a pretty heavy harp um, however it's still very comfortable um, on the shoulder which I was very surprised um, because I was worried about how the sound box is going to fit on me. I'm a pretty small person and I have a pedal harp that I do find the sound box to be quite bulky and I have trouble sort of hugging my arms around it if you will uh, but for this harp even though it's quite big um, I did not get the same sense of bulk right and I can actually reach all the way to the bottom string quite easily easier than my crescendo to some extent and I have a feeling it's because the string spacing on this harp is slightly narrower um, than the uh, dusty string so that it's more compact this way overall. The harp arrived in a box kind of like what you would get in a IKEA uh, furniture uh, store warehouse there. However, this is not an IKEA project. You definitely want to have some woodworking experience prior to taking on this project especially if you want to do some kind of nice finish on it. There's definitely going to be some skills involved. You're going to need some tools, nothing super crazy, uh, but you will need some tools. The instruction booklet that comes with the harp has done a really good job in giving you a step-by-step um, -step of what you're going to need to do. So reading through the instruction is going to give you an idea what you need in terms of tools uh, and even then I think um, you might find for example that we had this plane in the house um, and it's too small for the job so we end up getting something bigger um, that would uh, serve the purpose uh, we did not have to buy anything too crazy uh, or big for the purpose of doing this project but you will want to have some uh, pocket woodworking tools that, that can help you uh, along, especially when you're putting the um, sandbox together or if you want to do some um, shaping in the neck and whatnot. Another consideration about building the hard kit is that you want to make sure you have a lot of space for it. Uh, you're going to definitely need space that can accommodate at the minimum, right, the size of the sandbox um, and you're going to need some uh, space to potentially hang up the parts if you're going to do finishing and let it dry off so you're going to want some vertical space as well as horizontal space um, and something that we have done when we did this project is we actually sectioned off a part of our uh, dining room uh, we emptied the table and used the table basically for the project uh, and we wrapped some plastic around it because when doing the sanding process there's a lot of dust um, and that is definitely something that we anticipated uh, but not to the extent that the reality is going to turn out so you definitely want to have some space and if you um, if you're allergic to dust or if you have respiratory problem you might even need to take it to a garage or outdoor uh, workspace uh, to work on this project so you don't have to um, deal with that and I would say that I would personally never want to take on a project like this because I had very very limited woodworking experience. Now that being said, it is possible if you have some woodworking experience. So my husband uh, who have done some um, guitar kits and whatnot has some woodworking experience, not a very avid woodworker um, but he was able to follow the instruction. So this is something that you want to plan twice and do once, right? Um, and especially the finish. If you're going to do a, a nice finish, don't try it on the actual harp. Find some um, 
extra piece of wood and test out your finish, test, test out the coloring before you do it on the bigger part. And obviously you have the luxury of doing that uh, for the finishing, but you don't necessarily want to, for example, cut the sandbox pieces twice if you don't have to, right? You, you probably want to keep it as close to sort of, you know, one and done as you can. So um, yeah, I think there is some some precision required, but it's not to the point where I think you have to be a very skilled woodworker uh, to get it. And obviously that has to do with how the kit is put together. It's designed for people like my husband or potentially you, right? Who are woodworkers um, not specializing in that as a profession. So um, there's a lot of very thoughtful things that they have put together to make sure that it can happen. Uh, in, in, in the average house and as you can see the harp is still standing strong uh, nothing has exploded yet sound sound box is holding up quite well so I think this is going to last uh, but this is something that the folks in music makers for example is going to tell that it's built by a amateur versus someone uh, who is working in their shop uh, because there are some flaws in the finishing the the way that things are put together perhaps are not as uh, fine details as what you would expect as a finished harp from music maker now that being said i think there's a lot of uh, good learning moments that came out of putting together this harp and uh, i think from the perspective of learning about the anatomy of the harp and how everything in a harp works that was a great uh, exercise to do right so um, for example putting on the levers had given us the opportunity to learn how to regulate the levers right because after installing the levers we have to regulate them so that was a really good knowledge to have so that we can going forward regulate our levers with more confidence um, I also think that um, having put together the heart and kind of see how the different pieces come together has given me a appreciation on how to look at a harp and ask you know is this harp uh, designed uh, thoughtfully or is it something that was sort of um, just you know randomly slammed together so for example i'm learning that um, we have the trim here because we have to nail the sandbox in right and then we have to cover up the trim so uh, there's a noticeable trim in here but if you have um, specialized tools uh, you will be able to put together the joint without this trim. So if you look at music maker harps that are already built, right, they would not have this trim piece because they have the tools and the equipment and the skills to put together the joint uh, in a way that perhaps we can't do it at home. So um, it's noticing details like this that make me understand why some harps cost more money uh, compared to some others. So I think uh, that takeaway has been very uh, important and the other aspect of, of the heart building is that it became something that a memory that the family is going to treasure uh, going forward right our kids had a witness this harp being put together um, and now my daughter is playing this harp and she's quite attached to it um, and I can see why right um, it is something that your dad has built and you can help you know designed it if you will she really liked the blue color i really like the blue color too and we were quite set on doing a blue finish on, on the harp um, when we um, got the kit i've always loved the carmack blue harp and i know music makers offer uh, a vivid color finish in their harp so we were like oh it would be so cool if we can do something like that so um, we sort of participate in the design choices of the harp uh, and it become part of the memory that is going to live with the harp. Um, another design choice is that we have designed to uh, sort of level the curve here a little bit. There's, uh, if you compare this to the picture in the website, there's uh, a little bit of a hump in here that we decide to uh, shape off. And then also in the back here, we have decided to open up the holes a little bit bigger so we can reach in and change our strings easier. So there are some stuff that we have done uh, to sort of customize the harp and, and make it sort of our own. This is going to be a unique one of a kind thing uh, that we have that no one else uh, is going to be able to buy, which I think is a really cool thing, right? So the harp turns out to be what I expect it to be. 
I've done some reading on their website and seen some videos on their YouTube channel about the harp um, and Stephanie Klassen who um, participated in a video to describe the different harps that Music Maker Make had described this harp as having a very big sound, a very big bass and that's exactly what this harp is um, delivering, right? Uh, I have played this harp in a cocktail event and in a pretty big room and I was surprised by how well the sound was able to travel and how well the audience can hear the sound of the harp despite, you know, there's a lot of ambient noise happening in the room and I really think that this is a good alternative um, to have um, if you want to have a lever harp but you don't necessarily want to do pickup or carry a amplifier, bass is a really nice sound. still have a fairly sweet treble clef which I appreciate because I played a lot of um, fast music and I do like the sound to be crisp, right? <laughs> sound um, travels well. Uh, I'm also very happy to find out that I can use my dusty string uh, tuning key with this harp so I just keep one uh, tuning key for both my lever harps uh, and both of them get played quite a bit because they are very different critters um, and I think part of the um, thinking behind getting this harp is that I, I find it to be a different harp than my Crescendo, I don't necessarily want the same harp twice. I want something to be different. Um, and I think both of them are really good in their own ways. And I was very happy to be able to add this harp to my harp family. Um, and at the same time that I built this harp, uh, and other uh, friend in our harp circle there also built the uh, ballad harp. I'm gonna show some photos of the harp that she have uh, built and some of her thoughts on building the heart. to uh, know that uh, it is possible right for us to build this kit without an exorbitant amount of tools uh, not a huge amount of space and not necessarily a huge amount of skills uh, that being said I think both of us came to the conclusion that uh, if we're able to just get a ready build harp that's probably what we would do. Um, just pay someone the money to do it because really going through this project really make us appreciate uh, sort of that, yeah, the handy works that go into building the harp uh, and really help us understand why a harp costs the money that they do. I have also asked folks who have built a Music Maker Harp in the past to share their photos with me. So you're gonna see some of them on the screen right now. And it's very nice to see that some of these instruments that was built some time ago are still kicking around and making beautiful music, right? So I think uh, this harp and uh, also the ones that you see on the screen and their instruments that are not just harp is going to be um, around for a long time. And we're going to have more, hopefully, memories and story to tell us about these instruments going forward, which is wonderful. And if you are interested in building a harp kit and you're not sure whether or not this is something that you can handle, highly recommend you to send an email to music makers or give their phone line a call if you're in the United States, chat with someone in their shop and um, get some questions answers. They're very helpful and I think they will give you a very realistic uh, 
uh, view of what you can expect in building a harp. I'm personally very grateful that we decided to go ahead with the gig and that my husband had helped me put this together. I think this was a very unique experience. It's not something that I want to do over and over, but definitely as a once in a lifetime thing, I found that was a really interesting experience to go through as a harp learner, uh, also as a family. So I think that is very priceless, right? If you have built a an instrument or a harp from a kit by music maker leave us a comment and let us know what your experience was like and if you're contemplating buying a harp kit i hope this video will give you a little bit of an insight into the process of putting together a harp from a kit see you next time